Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be uh, rebooting the OEM CV axles to create an extended travel OEM axle. Uh, all the parts that are used will be listed in the description below. Just a little what I did. So I have a super small screwdriver. You basically just work it until this screwdriver and then you get it on the sides hammering down the sides, spin the wheel, repeat on the sides and the edges. Um, uh, here's a quick little snippet of me doing the same exact thing on the passenger side that I just tried to explain on the driver's side. Um, you're just going to tap away until you can get the larger screwdriver head into the space. Once you've kind of tapped it all the way around, you'll spin it and use the larger screwdriver and just kind of work it away from Next, we'll go into removing the cotter pin and the castle nut, which will allow us to just pull the entire rotor and brake caliper towards the rear of the truck. After you get this bolt free, um, you got to remove the four uh, lower ball joint bolts and then you'll be able to move the entire caliper and rotor towards the rear of the truck and rest it on top of the steering rack as seen here. Next we'll go into removing the CV axle. If you're having trouble pulling it out, just push it back in and slowly rotate it like a quarter of an inch and just keep working it clockwise until you eventually uh, are able to get it out. Now we're gonna remove all the clamps that are holding the old boots on. There's four of them, two on each boot. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to throw me a thumbs up. And also if you have any issues during your job, throw me a comment and I'll try to help you as much as I can. So the first boot you have to take off is the inner boot. And then you'll have to get all of the old grease out of the way in order to see the C-clip. And then you'll have to use these C-clip removing pliers to get this little C-clip, just loose it up so that you can yank the last little thing out. You don't really have to yank, but once you get the C-clip off of it, it'll just be able to slide right off. This allows you to take the boot off the end of the CV axle and then remove the inner boot. After you finish getting the boots off and you start cleaning up, you can uh, essentially just gather yourself for the next portion where you're going to reapply all the boots onto your CV axle. Here's my clean CV axle ready for reboot. 
So we'll start that reboot. We're going to slide the outer boot on first and get it packed with grease and then get the clamps on and make sure you want to basically get it tight enough to where you cannot freely spin the boot on either side. Next, we'll move into the modification. So here's the instructions. You basically cut your OEM boot right there on the red line, and then you just slide it right there on top of the CV axle portion on the inner side. And then this is what your Porsche 930 boot is going to slide right on over. So I had it on the CV axle already, and I just slid this right on. Before you start uh, tightening the bands and everything, just make sure you can't yank the inner portion of the CV axle off of the main CV axle itself because you have to make sure that you snapped into that little C-clip portion. After you're done with the inner boot reinstallation, then your entire CV axle is reassembled and ready for reinstallation. So you'll just have to keep doing the little turns and pushing it back in until you eventually get it to seed right on in there. After you get the uh, axle fed back through the rotor and everything, you can uh, get your lower ball joint torqued to spec. And then just re-verify that you're torqued when you uh, get the full weight of the vehicle on the ground. After the lower ball joint's connected, you can reconnect the castle nut and torque this center hub nut to 173 foot-pounds. After you get both sides complete, just make sure you uh, retop off your front differential with proper gear oil fluid because you did lose some of that during the installation. Here's the complete picture after about a 50 mile drive the next day. Uh, everything's looking good. There's no leaks, just keep monitoring it. Um, sometimes when you're putting the CV axles back into the differential, you can uh, kind of fold one of the seals, the rubber seals that are in there and it'll cause you to re leak differential fluid. So just keep an eye on that, and uh, thanks for watching.